At Sean Donnelly, that's a song called uh, Selling Off to Yankee Land. That's from his new album, which is called uh, Cut a Long Story Short. Good morning again, Gerald Michael Anderson here. Only on for an hour today. A person writes to me and says, why doesn't this handshake business uh, not intervene during Hugo's show? It's because, well, it's in God's hands and God likes Hugo. God gave up on me in 1971. Oh, was it 72? Do you remember when God I gave up on me? I love that song. Isn't that a great song? I would love a copy of that album. I'll tell you what I'll do. What? Because of the day that's in it, yes. because we're celebrating, I'm going to give you a copy of this. See this CD uh-huh, that I uh-huh, hold up? Uh-huh, of Sean Donnelly. Yes, yes. I, uh, Peace would, you mind if, would you mind if I play it in the week program? No, I, you're, you not only play it, I'll give it to you as a gift. Oh, that's I've great. never given you a gift before. No, no, that's nice. When was the last time I gave you a gift? I've never, ever, never, ever, 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 ever. ever, ever. ever. Right, some requests. The number to ring if you want to contact this program is 08459 555 678. The email address is jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk and the text messaging service is 81771. I must feel, I must have, I I must confess. It's hard to get her going, isn't it? No, it's not. I find I'm I, very refreshed. I know I find it difficult. I mean, what, but you haven't f- done anything yet. No, but from that time, we were waiting to go from half past ten, and you were waiting. To, and, Nobody and, knows the anguish uh, we went through because we uh, didn't know what time you were on at. I mean, I'm sitting happened. here since half ten. Uh, I'm right. sitting here since half ten. You were in there talking to Janet and everything. Yes. And we were waiting and waiting and waiting. I know, the suspense was killing me. And then Nolan was telling us what the Queen was wearing. I could hardly bear the suspense. And then with three minutes to 11, they said, it's happened. It's happened. <laughs> it's happened. It's, it's over. It's, you know. What was the point? Well, you know, I, I, I'm gratified. Uh, I mean, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Uh, could there you call for you? Is there really? Yes. Could you please say hello to Willie Boyle in Wolverhampton, formerly from Tam Nahiran? Do you know how to pronounce that? It's a small town land outside our city. Tam Nahiran. A, a, a lot of people say Tam Nahiran. That's what I'm thinking. Tam Nahiran. But I what think does that mean? Does that mean I'm not a true dairy person if I don't know how to say Tom Nairn? Well, He's been in England for 50 years and listens to the show every day. It's his link with home. Isn't oh, that nice? nice? A lot of people do listen to this programme at home. That's because they're afraid well, to go away. <laughs> That's from his sister Mary and all the family in Derry, Soap, London, Derry. Hello, good morning. Uh, Hello. F- oh, yes, good morning. How are you today? Very well, thanks, Jerry. Good. Uh, myself nor Mr Coyle have been invited to storm it, so we're here. How are you today? Oh. What can we do for you? Yes, I'm, I myself, I'm heading up to Storm and so I'm here. Are you going up? Great, what time are you going up at? Well, we're just coming in now to Belfast. Are you? Have you got an invitation? Are you some kind of civil servant or dignitary or just an ordinary Joe? Oh, I've got an invitation to the church. Oh, good man. What's the weather like down there now? Hello? Hello, can you hear me still? <laughs> well, that was, uh, I think people are, I think people are getting a bit fed up of this. <laughs> There's what a call ha- on too. A different one or is the same one? No, it's Plunkett. Try and get what? Plunkett. <laughs> well, try and get him back because right. he'll, he'll think we cut him off. That was obviously some kind of fault. Uh huh. Hello, good morning. Hello, hello, Jerry. I'm sorry, we had some kind of fault with our previous caller. I hope it doesn't happen again. I know. Well, <laughs> you may be doing it to me too. <laughs> no, I was on to you about about the transparencies that I wanted for my, my daughter Fanula's uh, party at the weekend, and you put me on to the happy snaps, snappy snaps down in High Street. Were they able to help you? Beautiful, and they treated. They gave me twenty, but they're pretty expensive, and they're a pound each. Yes, and I had about thirty of them, and uh, they gave me them twenty percent off ADP oh, for through God's you. Sake. Oh, that's fantastic. And there's a lovely picture up on the wall with a beautiful woman in your arms. <laughs> Who is she? Right. Uh, I don't know which beautiful woman that is. There are so many. Uh, well, I, the last time I was in there were a number of photographs. They seemed to like me. Yeah, uh, there's do, no photographs of Julian with beautiful women. I don't know why. But they seem to have photographs of me up there with beautiful women. Yeah. And I saw three or four. I don't know who it could be. Who would it be? Mm, Catherine Zeta-Jones was one I remember for no, a while no, no, Sean what right. beautiful women are up in the wall um, with me you've been photographed with Catherine Zeta-Jones yeah, she, 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 she took a great notion of me Miss I was very disappointed Britain, Miss Great Britain Miss Great Britain I think well, she, no Miss she, World Miss what World how like, dare Mr. you anyway. Miss World that Indian girl the Indian doctor she's what no can't, not, no, not Miss World Miss World no yes. this is another girl this Miss not, World the Indian I, girl the beautiful beautiful girl who is lovely you, and who can be seen on YouTube Given David Letterman the hardest time of his life. Do you know why? No. Did you ever see? I can't remember. Her name is Asher Awara or something like that. Right. I, don't, I can't pronounce her name. But she, she she was Miss World and she was a doctor. Mm-hmm. And she was on a TV program with me. And her and I, do you know the way I click sometimes yes, with Miss yes, World? Yes. And we clicked and then we talked and she was great and she was the smartest girl I think I've ever met. Now, she, I happened to see one night she went on the uh, late show in America with the, the late night with David Letterman. And he made the f- fabulous, horrible mistake of not realising that she was as smart as she was. And he came out, she came out, 
and he said something silly to her about, you know, about being a wee girl or something like that. She just went through him. It's on YouTube. You should watch it. Well, what's it called? Uh, David Letterman uh, interviews Miss World, uh, a lady called... Uh, I, I can't remember, can't right, remember just, her name. Uh, David Letterman interviews Miss World. Would you, uh, get who's in there? Is Janet, Janet today. Janet, will you do Miss World, Miss India... Uh, David, David Letterman, Letterman, David introduced... Letterman, Miss World, Miss India, right? Okay. And uh, we we'll try and get her name, and then so people can Google. Uh, but their this leisure. girl that I'm thinking about, this is a girl. She was very, what? Well, she was very healthy. You know what I Run mean? Run about the chest. Yes, and yes. you're you're for you were photographed. There's a photographer of you and her and Jimmy Cricket on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, she she was uh, she used to be a page three girl, so, Linda, Samantha, she, uh, an Italian name. What was her no, name? No, was it not Samantha Fox? No, it wasn't oh her Samantha. as well. Yeah, your photograph of her, Linda Lusari. That's who you're with. Is it her? Yeah, but I was with her alternately. One day I'd be with her, the other day I'd be with Samantha Fox. You know, I just hopped from one to the yeah. other. And there's another photograph of you and Miss Roma Warren. Downey. Roma Downey, yeah, but she doesn't count. She's from Derry. Photograph with all these beautiful girls because I'm attractive, Sean. Oh. Is that right? Yes. So what what what's the what, where are we at now in this conversation? We're talking to this man. This man has been very well, very well treated by Snappy Am Snaps. Am I in the conversation? Yes, this is the way it happens in this show. I'm sorry about that's the general tenor of the way things go. So you were treated well by Snappy Snaps, and you're organised. Yeah, it's lovely. It was, it, it was a lovely. And thank you, as as uh, every you always come to the people's aid, Jerry. Good man. Thank you very much. And this is encouraging people out there who have any problems at all as to whether to I get this. G- uh, Jerry. By yes. the way, I, I've lived in Belfast for 60 years, but I was I was born down, I'm sure you, you know the place well, a wee place called Shrove. Oh, for God's oh. sake. Oh, listen to Mr. Cohen. Yeah. Oh, going into paroxysms of yeah, desire. I went to Shrove as a wee boy. So did I. Down the lighthouse. The big, yeah. the big white bay. And the lighthouse. Yes. Yeah. I haven't been to Shrove in years. I was there not so long ago. It's a lovely, lovely place. It's just down beside Greencastle. That's right. The Gillespie's lived down That's there. Right. Did they really? Yeah, he knows. The, <laughs> you know the Gillespie's, Plunkett. My, no, my, 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 my well, why should he possibly know the Gillespie's? In, in Shrove, McLaughlin. Hey, there you are. The Mc- Susan McLaughlin. That's so right. I, I, my mother's a McLaughlin. Is that right? Oh, I'm a Donegal McLaughlin, yeah. Well, so am I. I'm an egg. Are. Anyway, listen, this is going out of control. Uh, thank you very I, much, and uh, you, you, you wish to thank those nice people there. Thank you, and thank you, and thank Janet. Janet was great. Thank you very much. Janet, you were great. Okay, thank you. Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you were great, Janet. <laughs> Janet says you're so hateful. Aren't I? <laughs> great show to kick the week off, kid. Mr. Coyle seems in good nick due to a combination of prayer and monkey glands. Are you still taking the monkey glands? Oh, by the way, there's yes. been a suggestion here. Yeah, I'm sure there has. No, but listen, <laughs> it's a very good suggestion from Brendan. Yes. Now, this... This may, this may, now I want you to think about Nolan this. was far too happy this last couple of days. I never heard him happier. Do you know what he has achieved his lifetime dream? That is to broadcast beyond 10.30. He's determined to see the back of me, you know. So he does it most days, he runs over. No, but then they stopped him, and then he had yeah. to stop at half 10, but now they've made him go on. He lasted to 11 today. Do you know this is going to happen? He'll be on until half 11 tomorrow, and then suddenly, I'll oh, just another guy around here. Who said that? Johnny Friendly in On the Waterfront. Pretty soon, I'm just another guy around here. Lee J. Cobb. Across the, wa- uh, at the waterfront. What was that movie called? On at the, the Waterfront? On the. On the Waterfront. Yeah. Marlon Brando. He was the union boss. He said, pretty soon, I'll be just another guy around here. Anyway. Anyway, Brenton suggests what? that you shake hands with me on air because we're always fighting. Never. Could, could, could you do it? No, I can't do it publicly. I'll do should. it privately. No, I think we should do it. No, I'm not doing it. I think we should do I'm it. I'm not doing it in front of the cameras. We'll do it at half past 11. No. Let's build up. I'm not let's, doing it. I'm not ready. No, let's get. Let's talk to Janet. Let's talk to people about the handshake. About I'm not about ready about how it. How they think it's going to happen. Janet, what do you think? Do you think I'm sure you, people will be really interested in this. What do you think, yeah. Dan? Do you think I should shake his hand? What do you think? Mm-hmm. Then we need some dead air. Well, hold on a second. Uh, I'll tell you what. Yes. I will... I'm going to ring somebody yes. who has refused to talk to us. Right. I'm going to ring the controller of the BBC. I'm going to say to him, do you think I should shake hands with Sean? Yeah, that's what the controller of the BBC has got to say about that. Yeah. We invited yeah. him on, but he said he wasn't yeah. available. Do you want to ask him something, Sean? Yeah, I just want to ask the controller of the BBC. Yes? Why shouldn't we shake hands? Controller of the BBC seemed to giggle there. Ask him again. Controller, why shouldn't Jerry and I shake hands? 
Well, there you are. There you are. That's your reply. Yes, 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 yeah. Great show. To... <laughs> there's, somebody, there's somebody shouting in my ear. What's what that? I do? I, I'm, not in, I'm not inside your headphones. <laughs> He's shouting I in my, there's somebody shouting in my ear. Is it somebody from Star with a lyric or something? There's somebody shouting in my ear. Who is it? I don't know. Some strange person was in my ear there. Okay. Must be somebody next door. Never so mind. You're not, we're not going to shake hands. No. Oh, well. Mr. Coyle seems in good nick, thanks to the combination of prayer and monkey glands, and the periodic screams and rattling the bars of his cage do not impinge upon the quality of the show in any way. Tommy, my cat, friend and companion, next of kin and the son I never had, said, I just came from Stormont. Things are really buzzing up there. There they all were, out on the lawn, running, skipping, leaping, generally having a good time. In the corner of the playground stood Jim Allister, like a young, surly, red-faced Marlon Brando. Pretty soon, I'll be just another guy around here. Hey, easy rider, I said. Why don't you join in the fun? Put this rope around your neck and I'll show you how to skip. Alex Atwood laughed like a Mexican <laughs> and said, Speaker, we don't want your filthy speaker. Mark Durkin threw back his head, laughed for eight and a half minutes and drawled, Senor, the reality is we are outlaws. If you want in-laws, the reality is go visit your mother-in-law. I shook my head and said, Mark Durkin has gone to the dogs ever since he stopped reading The Messenger. And you know, there's a moral there. Don't stop reading The Messenger. Tommy sprayed Pledge furniture polish on a small Norwegian dwarf, polished him up to a high luster, shine, and said, Isn't she lovely, so graceful, so regal? You're talking about the Queen, I asked. No! I was talking about Mae McFetridge. Of course I'm talking about the Queen. Apparently when she met Lord Ken McGuinness and Ennis Gillen yesterday, she grabbed the rural knight by the lapels and said, Listen, walrus head, keep your nose out of the sexual orientation of my subjects, or I'll get Phil and the boys to whip your ass, capiche? I whipped a speck of dust from the Norwegian dwarf and went out singing... Caviar and cigarettes, well versed in etiquette, very fond of corgi pets. She's a killer queen. Now, that's one of the greatest, greatest records ever made. That's Kate Bush and Cloud Buston. If I ever go on Desert Island Discs, that's going to be number one on my list. Do you remember the rumour went around so? that I was going to present Desert Island Discs? Do you remember right. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, Kirsty yeah. Young got it because she knew Gloria Honeyford. Uh huh. Do you remember that? Listen, we have been watching this interview with David Letterman. It lasts seven minutes, and we are now into how long? Six minutes of it, and there's nothing about nothing, not not a thing that you would you would you'd watch. Have you got the right one? Yeah. Is she cheeky to him? No, no, no. No, she's cheeky to him. No, no well, if you, you regard this being cheeky. Well, what does that say on that one? It says, um, uh, what's her name? Mm. Ishwai. I'll, I'll, I'll help Ria. you with that. Ishwarya. Ishwarya Ria. Rai. Rai is a Rai. Rai. That's her Rai. name. A I S H W A R. Burns David Letterman. Are you, listening to, are you listening to them talking? Yeah. Yeah. Well, how can you listen to him talking if you're listening to me talking? Because when Kit Bush was roaring out of her, we were listening to Kit was Kit Bush singing. You see, Kit Bush was singing, we were anyway, listening to Anyway, stick with it. It's, it's, no, it's, it's, very, it's very subtle, well, you know? Well, unless it happens in the last Here, listen, 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 listen. We've got, we've got some guests here. Um, Eamon Malley and uh, Eamon McCann are here. They've uh, stuff to discuss. I think they're going to do something different. Uh, they're trying to get in on the act, I do believe. I think you're doing the song. It's an old song from the 60s. It's by a number of people. Sandy Shaw. And Neil Harrison is called Wings of Your Mind. It's called Wings of Your Mind. Windmills of Your Mind. Yes, that's what I right. said. I would say. But it's, it's difficult because the first word is well. That's what I was looking at here. How are you? How are you going to pronounce the you word the lyrics round? Front, you got the lyrics in front of you? How are you going to say the word round? Easy, I just say loud. Round, well, round, say round. Round like a circle and spiral, or a wheel within a wheel, or an ever spinning reel. It's just a fishing metaphor. I'm very fond of fishing because I find it relaxes me. After a hard day at Stormont, I have to get my rod out and put the bait on and throw the thing in the water, and then the fish bites. And that's when I'm like a carousel that's turning, running wings around the room. It's a far too many hours. It's a good job, it's a good job that there was no riots in Ross Trevor. That's all I can say with your pronunciation of the word, the letter R. Like a cow's turning, running rings around the moon. Like a clock whose hands are sweeping past the minutes of faith. And worlds like an apple, wearing finally in the space. 
like the circles that you find. <laughs> like a tunnel that you follow to a tunnel of zoom down a hollow to a cavern where the sound is never shot. Shouldn't that be Sean? Sean? Sean Sean? Sean Kyle! In a half forgotten dream on the ripples and pebble, something tosses and strings that may metaphor from throwing stones during the troubles. Throwing the pebble. And this time, of course, could be pepper bomb or did a walk. Let me see a walk. Running a walk. Keys that jingle in with reference to the eight blocks. Keys that jingle in your pocket. Words that jangle in your head. <laughs> Excuse me. What I would like to know before you continue with this song or whatever it is that you're trying to bring to us, is this is this a country and western song? Is it a is it a song about the riots in Derry? Is it about the troubles in Northern Ireland? What are you trying to tell us? It's about the inner mind, something you wouldn't be familiar with. It's the sound of distant drumming, just the fingers of your hand, pictures hanging in the hallway. And a fragment of the song have remembered names and faces, but to whom do they belong? Wound, like a circle in a spiral, or a wheel within a wheel, never ending or beginning, a little spinning wheel, like a snowball in the mountain, carnival balloon, like a carousel that's turning, running wings around the moon, like the circles that you find. In the windmills, is mine. Well, how hard was that? Well, I don't think that Phil Coulter has anything to worry about. It's because he's far too much money, Sean. If I had his money, I wouldn't worry about anything either. Do you want to finish this one off? Do you want to sing a bit of it? Absolutely not. I think I think you're in this one totally on your own. <laughs> that was over anyway. I, I can't see many people, especially the people of the bog side, running out and buying that or getting requests played on the Jerry Anderson. Program. Like a tunnel that you follow to a tunnel of its own, down a hollow to a cavern where the sun is never shown, like a door that keeps revolving. And a half forgotten dream of the ripples of a pebble. Someone tosses in a stream, like the circles that you find in the windmills of the mind. Absolutely rubbish. Thank you very much. That's Robbie Robertson. That's a song called Houdini from an album called Robbie Robertson, How to Become Clairvoyant. And a lot of you were quite taken by that song I played at the start of the programme when we eventually got on. That's a song by Sean Donnelly called uh, uh, Sailing Off to Yankee Land. It's from an album called Cut a Long Story Short. And uh, you can get that through Sean's website, which is Sean, www.seandonnellyfolkmusic, F-O-L-K, of course, M-U-S-I-C dot com. There we are. Great song. Listen, I'm hey. going to I, 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 tell them. What? Tell them we shook hands during that song. Ugh, I know it happened. It happened. Yes. Well, I see. You, he, see, Sean came in here, and uh, I, I don't know what happened. No, you come in here. <coughs> no, no, you come in. No, here. you come in here. No, 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 you no, came in here. Uh, no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't no. go in there. No, I wouldn't go in there. You know, we shook hands well, in here. You anyway, came we met to in the me. hall. We met in the hall. All right then. I was going in. I was going to the toilet, and you were going in to get some papers out of the machine, and whatever happened, my my hand just just shot out. And I made contact with Flesh, and I went, ah, who, who owns that? And it was your hand. And then suddenly... Dallas on the floor. A, 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 <laughs> no change there, then. <laughs> and then I saw these flash bulbs, and, and all the flashes, and I, was, I suddenly realised that the world's media was around us, and I don't know what the papers are going to look like tomorrow. And it, 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 But you did it first. No, you put your hand no, out No, you first did it first. Me. You put your hand out. You put your hand out first. Anyway... Uh, a gentleman is writing this programme, and I don't think this is a real, real name. He called himself Belfast Obama. Oh, oh, do you think that's I don't the, think so. It may not be his real name, but he's been listening to a song in this programme, which I've been playing quite regularly, by Roxy Gordon, called Indians. And it's a very unusual song. You like that, don't I you? I love it, yes. It's a song that not everybody gets. It's a, this man who's talking about who's an Indian and who isn't. And in other words, I have to explain this. See, a person who's an Indian is regarded as being cool, and a person who is an Indian is regarded as being, you know, warm-hearted, 
Whereas a person who is not cool or warm-hearted is not an Indian. Listen, uh, President Clinton is an Indian. Richard Nixon isn't. Cool or warm-hearted? But see, they, they sound opposites, but they're the same thing. Oh, yeah. Cool is somebody who's kind of, you know, yeah. hey, oh, oh, laid back. I, yeah, yeah. And, then and warm-hearted. Uh, and warm-hearted. And warm-hearted. Uh, oh, I, uh, yeah. She I'm can be you. cool and warm-hearted. And warm-hearted, yes. yes. But, to, to make it to, yeah. to, to uh, yes. a more recent analogy, uh, President Clinton was an Indian. George Bush wasn't. No. By no means. No, definitely so he, he's not. taking this a step further. He heard me the other day describing, well, expressing, expressing some distaste that had been referred to as a veteran broadcaster in a newspaper at the weekend. Remember I said that to you? I'd was Michael have... Foote an Indian? Yes, he was. And, and the Tony Blair? Wasn't. No. Not, no. So he said... What about uh, Neil Kinnock? Neil Kinnock was an Indian. Was he? Yes, he was. I don't know. He was. Don't know. Yes, he was. I'll tell you how I know that. I remember being in Broadcasting House one time. Remember I had a short spell in London? Yes. And I was over there one time and one mm-hmm. of the producers said to me, he said, uh, Neil Kinnock will never be Prime Minister. And I said, why not? This is a long time ago. He said, uh, he came into the BBC to do a... Uh, 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 an interview one time mm-hmm. and he said uh, do you mind if I just nip into the gents and mm-hmm. I said no it's okay so uh, it was quite a long time in there so the guy the producer was getting a little worried so he went into the gents and, and he saw Neil Kinnock hanging out of the window smoking and that's when he knew he'd never be a Labour Prime Minister oh. because if you're a Prime Minister you don't care if you smoke or not oh, you, know, right? Right. you don't care if somebody says you can't smoke here so yeah. that means he was an Indian. And that was long before the smoking ban. Absolutely, because oh, he didn't right. want to be offending people, you know. No, at that time, people didn't smoke in in in, in, in broadcasting. This is not that long ago. Uh, but the ban wasn't in there when you were there. Oh, there was no ban. No. But there was, a, there was a non-spoken thing that you didn't smoke. They, they discouraged people smoking. All right. Especially in toilets and stuff like that. All right. So there you are. So this, this gentleman looks uh, at other people and he said, Trevor MacDonald was a veteran, but Ivan Little isn't. Do you agree with that? Are you talking about veterans No. No, this is what he's saying here. No, but he means Indian. No. Alistair yeah. Stewart is a veteran, but Jeannie Johnson ain't. Anyone yeah. you don't agree with, just let me know. Yeah. And people who buy groceries from vans are veterans, but shoppers in the supermarket ain't. Jackie Fullerton is a veteran. Adrian Logan ain't. And the RUC was a veteran, but the PSNA aren't. Pamela Ballantyne is a veteran, but the mayor of Belfast isn't. Carrick Fergus is a veteran, but Bally Money ain't. Belfast International Airport is a veteran, but Belfast City Airport isn't. George Best was a veteran, Keith Gillespie ain't. And Marching on the Streets is a veteran, but Walking Around ain't. Castle Court is a veteran, Victoria Square ain't. Sitting Bull was a veteran, but Peter Robinson isn't. But Peter Robinson's not an Indian. He's not. That's, a, that's, a, that's an unfair... He's not an Indian. Uh, it's, a, it's opinion. There, but, yeah, but it's a... Uh, well, Sitting Bull and Peter Robinson? Well, the two of them are very angry. Uh, and Dana is a veteran. Nadine Coyle isn't. Yeah. Burials are veterans. Lambeg drums are veterans. But keyboards will never, ever be veterans. An Ulster Fry is a veteran. Potato bread isn't. Now, that's an odd one. Wouldn't you think they'd be the same thing? Soda Farls are veterans. Wheat and bread is veterans. Health food stores try very hard <laughs> to be veterans. This is the hurtful part. And I don't know whether to read this or not. No, sometimes I can, you know, I can not read things out if I choose not to. Mm-hmm. But it would ruin the shape of the whole thing if I didn't read the last two lines. Mm-hmm. Jerry Anderson is a veteran. Mm-hmm. Sean Coyle ain't. Oh. Mm-hmm. I know, she's, Janet felt that. I think not having a mobile phone is a veteran. Having one ain't. Ride this train up and down and across a strange, wonderful land. Let's go through our BBC colleagues to see who are Indians or not. Well, I want to ask you one before you do that. Nolan's no. an Indian. No, he's not. He is. No, he's not. He is. No, he's not. He doesn't care. No, he's not. He's, he's worried a little bit now because no, he's he thinks not. he might sack him. No, he's no, but not. He, he doesn't care, really. No, definitely not. He is not. an Indian. No. Now, Hugo tries very hard to be an Indian. No. But he's not. No. Mark Carruthers isn't an Indian. No. I don't think there's an Indian in the building except Hugo. No, sorry, except Stephen. Oh, Jackie. Stephen's the only... Jackie Fuller is not an Indian. Yeah, Jackie's right. He's not. Okay. Buys his clothes in Logan's. Um, you can't be an Indian and buy your clothes in Logan's. Let's see. Uh, there's no the... Indians. There's no Indians. Uh, let me think. Let, let me, me think. think. There must be an Indian somewhere. Mm-hmm. Who? Connor Bradford? No way. Noel Thompson? He's nearly an Indian. No. Noel I would say... Thompson. No, he's, uh, 
He's trying hard. Knowles. He's Indian. nearly an Indian. No, he's not. No, he's not. Knowles is the only Indian I think we have. No, he's not. Knowles not an Indian. Well, I, apart from myself, of course. No. I am an Indian. I'm uh, a friend of the Indian. What do you see Anyway, here? speaking of Nolan, the gentleman, think about it for a moment. A gentleman says, uh, Nolan is really going to town on the dramatic silences. He said, this gentleman, Manny, uh, he's taken his license, uh, uh, paying duty seriously. He says, I've taken it upon myself to add up these moments that he is not actually speaking or making any noise and will send in the accumulated, accumulated time to Gregory Campbell. I expect the BBC to deduct the relative money for the Nolan silences. I've so got an Indian for you. Who's that? Well, Janet's suggestion. Who's that? Connor Bradford. No, I said. No, oh, I just said a minute ago he's not an Indian. He is. Ah, pff, pff. Here, here. Oh, la, 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 la. That's right. Give you know. me an Indian between. Right, who's the no? Oh, la, 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 la. Jerry Lewis, Dean Martin. Who's the Indian? Dean Martin. Uh, do you know how I know that? No. Because Jerry Lewis was by far the smarter of the two. Do you know that Jerry Lewis used to crunch himself over to make him look smaller than Dean Martin? He was actually taller than Dean Martin. Much taller than Dean Martin. No, he used to, he used to bend himself over. You're right. And he pretended to be stupid. Uh-huh. And uh, Dean Martin was the kind of smart guy. But actually, uh, Jerry Lewis was the smart guy. And he you're said... You're not making sense here. Both, both were smart. No, no Jerry Lewis was smarter than Dean Martin. Right. Now, Dean, Dean, Dean Martin portrayed the smart guy. He, was the, he portrayed the smart guy and Jerry Lewis was the fool. But he wasn't. Jerry Lewis was the smart so, but guy. But you said Dean Martin was the Indian. Hello. Yeah, but he was the Indian, yeah. Janet? No, because Dean, uh, no, but Dean, Dean Martin didn't care. That's why he's no. an Indian. He just yeah. enjoyed himself. Jerry Lewis said, uh, the, our partnership, my partnership with Dean worked very, very well. Mm-hmm. I wrote all the material, did all the business, and Dean played golf. That's what he said. Yeah. That's an Indian. What about Jerry Kelly? What about him? Is he an Indian? <laughs> Choctaw. Cherokee, Brother. my arse. God, that's, uh, of course, uh, what are they called? What are they called? Where's the thing? I don't know. Caller rings in to say that saying it like it is, is Indian. Political correctness is not. Good. Isn't that good? That's the answer. And that's the song called Rise. Uh, Some other candidates here. Well, here's, here's, uh, can I run this one past you? Go ahead. Colin Murray is an Indian. This is from Jane and Dramore. No. No, he's not. (laughs) Colin Murray started off as, as a an wee Indian. Indian. And then he became a white man. He's lost. No, he's, Colin Murray is no longer an Indian. Ralph McLean? No. No. Um, Bob Kennedy is an Indian. Yeah. Brian, uh, hold on. Bob Kennedy is an Indian. Brian Kennedy ain't. I'd put, I'd put that around the other one. No, I think I... Well, I don't really know Bap. So, I, no. Jerry Anderson is an Indian. Sean Coyle isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Jordy Toft is definitely an Indian. Yes. Bear Grylls isn't. Absolutely right. Bear Grylls is a bluffer. And there are a couple of other names here that I don't like mentioning. Look, Patrick Cavan is, Patrick Cavan is channeling again. All right. Tell him to stop, will you? There's a poem called, I'm going to finish off this today, it's called The Threshing. Many people like this. The roar of the diesel engine, the snap and hiss of the belts. The threshing machine is set up at Lennon's Haggard to separate the wheat from the chaff, the last judgment, the day of reckoning. Up on rock, savage, sit the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And time, like a wet sack, clings to the limbs of man. The mice and rats, the rats and mice, burrow deep into the stack to avoid the pitchforks. Each man's trouser legs are tied with binder twine, not knowing where a frightened rat will seek safety. Up the leg of a man's drawers, I would imagine. People remember the ferret McSkilly and the terrible gnawing he got. Terrier dogs wait, white sharp teeth, red rolling tongues. Anticipation of the massacre makes them tremble all over. A man gives a shout. As they tumble out, rats and mice, mice and rats, a tide of vermin scatter over the stubble field. No place to hide, no place to hide. Yelping terriers go into a frenzy. A fleeing rat has just time to scream before it is broken and tossed high in the air. The men watch in amusement. Go on, Jack. Good boy, Tiny. Spot, spot, there's a rat, as big as a cat, hiding behind the wheel of the thresher. Kill spot. Boys, we spot, that's a great ratter. The men stop for tea, surrounded by rats and mice. Dead mice and rats. The terrier dogs, aware that they have done good, sit by their master's feet, waiting for the throne crushed. How golden the chaff is, how golden as night falls. Creaking carts lurch and bump up the rutted lane. The harvest is safely gathered in. Give us this day our daily bread. Tell Patrick Calvin to stop writing to me. I haven't time for this. Uh, caller rings in to say that Cecilia Daly is... An Fra- Indian. Frank McCrory? Never. Is not. Absolutely not. Yeah. Um, do you know who's an Indian? Lynette Faye is an Indian. Hugo's not. 
Yeah, Lynette Fares. She's an Indian. She's Lynette Fares. Texting whilst driving is Indian. Speaking on the phone whilst driving has just been a twat. <laughs> 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 Listen, uh, that's nearly all we've time for today. And I'm not sure if we're going to be here tomorrow. Uh, Why maybe not? Wayne Rooney might want to shake hands with Fabio Capello. <laughs> <laughs> which means that Nolan will be on all day. Um, a lot of people complaining about Nolan being on. And, but I wouldn't read any of those. No, you didn't. No, he did well, because yeah. after all, this is an important day, Sean. You seem to underestimate the importance. Here, offer, give me your hand, Sean. 